Hello, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net, and this acrylic painting tutorial is going to show you how to paint gingerbread cocoa with acrylics on an 11 by 14 inch canvas. So this is a canvas that has been painted black, so you can use Mars black paint or literally any black paint that you have available. Cover up the canvas with one layer of black and you're good to go. So I'll be demonstrating with uh, 11 by 14 inch sides and let's go over brushes and colors. So we'll be using a number 12 bright brush. So that's like a half inch flat brush, a number four round brush. I'll be using this angle brush for the pine needles. And if you are painting a canvas black, you can use literally any big flat brush like this one inch flat brush, or you can use a three quarter flat brush. So we'll be using Mars Black. We'll be using Titanium White. These are Liquitex Basics brand, but you can use whatever brand you have available. Hooker's Green Hue Permanent, Light Green Permanent, Cadmium Red Medium, Primary Yellow, Burnt Umber, and Raw Sienna. If you wanna change the color of your cup, you can sub Cad Red out for any other colors. So turquoise would be a pretty color for this. Uh, we will also be using this cup template. So print that out on a regular sheet of paper and I'll be showing you a trick um, of how to trace these onto dark canvases. So we'll be using a white piece of chalk. You'll need a pencil and finally you'll need a ruler to help you draw the table line in this. So we are going to go ahead and get started. Let's get our template for the cup ready. So this is printed out on regular size sheet of eight and a half by 11 paper and flip it over to the back size side and use a piece of chalk. So this is just regular white chalk. And what I'm doing is I'm rubbing the part of the drawing just where the lines are. I don't have to rub chalk everywhere because that would get kind of messy. So just where the lines are. And then take your template. So this one is, if I line the bottom edge up to the bottom edge of the canvas and just kind of push it over a little bit, maybe like a half inch to the left, that's about where this is going to be. It's not center in the canvas. I wanted it a little off centered um, so that I have extra room on the left side of this because there's gonna be a candy cane hanging out and there's gonna be some greenery in the lower left corner. So we wanna leave some room for that. And definitely a lot of room at the top for our gingerbread man. So you wanna press firmly with your pencil and just trace the cup. And then when you lift it, you'll have your drawing on your canvas. If you wanted to do this drawing on your own, the height of the cup is about seven inches and the width of the cup, including the handle, is about seven inches wide. So then we're gonna place our table line. So this is about three and a half inches from the bottom of the canvas. And I'm just gonna use a ruler to draw my table line. So we have enough room for some greenery and some marshmallows on the table. So we don't want our line too high, but then we don't want it too low either. Then we're gonna load our palette with titanium white paint and use this 12 bright brush. So I am going to prime my cup with white paint first. And you wanna do this um, no matter what kind or what color you're painting your cup. This is going to allow our color to be very bright on the canvas. So using the 12 bright, I'm going to just kinda outline the cup edges. But right here, I'm doing curved strokes and that is gonna give my cup some form just by doing these curved strokes. So we don't need to fill in the entire thing with solid white 100%. If we have some of the black from the canvas still showing through, that is perfectly okay. In fact, we kind of want that to happen on purpose. So if you can see what I'm doing, these curved strokes in the middle, there's a lot of that black still showing through. I'm letting that paint just kind of run dry. We don't need it to be completely filled up. I'm gonna do the same thing to the handle. So if you 
want, I did this, if you want to switch to your round brush, this is the number four round brush, switch to that. It's a lot easier to do these curvy small areas with the round brush than it is with that 12 bright brush. But just paint that handle white. And again, if there's some of that canvas still showing through, that's okay. Then you want to paint the rim of your coffee cup. That one is also a lot easier to do with the round brush. Just taking this white and going over that line for the opening of the cup. Leave the inside of the cup black for now, so don't add any paint in there. So then, you don't need to wait for this to dry completely. However, if it's saturated, it shouldn't be, but if it is kind of let it dry first and then go to this step. Um, I'm gonna load my palette with cadmium red medium hue and that's the color I'm gonna paint my coffee cup. If you're doing a different color, such as turquoise, you can do the same exact thing I'm doing, but just with a different color. And using the 12 bright brush to basically paint over everything that I just painted. So um, everything in the middle of the cup goes in a curved direction. And then when you get to the sides, you can change your stroke to kind of um, go vertical just so that helps you kind of cut in on that shape. But pretty much everything is curved. And I'm grabbing a little bit of that. So I'm not grabbing the paint on my brush it's still there's still a little bit of white that's not dry yet on the cup first layer and some of that is mixing with my red and that's okay I kind of like that I like how that's kind of blended if you like that too and yours is dry you can add just a teeny bit of white to your brush and just kind of let that blend in with this we will do some highlighting on purpose here so just fill in this entire area using that curved strokes, using the full width of the brush. If there's still some black showing through or if some of that white is still showing through, that is definitely okay. Then we can paint the handle. So I'm just taking that red, same thing. If I need to switch to the round brush, which I will and get more red on my palette to fill in the handle, solid red. Don't worry about highlighting or shading at all right now. And then you want to paint the rim red as well, but leave the inside black. Next, let's go ahead and rinse our number four round brush off. And we're gonna be doing some highlighting on our cup next. So on your palette, mix about equal parts white and red, maybe a little bit more white than red, so you can make a light red color. We don't want it to be pure white, but we want it to be like an in-between color of red and white. I'm gonna do this on the left side of the cup. I'm gonna do a kind of a vertical curved line using this 12 bright brush. Let's start at the top curve down so it's like a line that kind of goes along the edge but a little bit more inwards from the edge and it's slightly curved I'm going to do another one over here on the right so it starts out a little bit thick it's a little bit more pressure on the brush and then kind of release the pressure to make it go thin so there's two light red vertical lines that are actually going curved on the edge of the cup and then I'm gonna do another one down here in the lower left corner of the cup. 
and then a little bit extra over here along the rim using this light red color. So this effect gives our cup this kind of shiny look. I'm just going back over those two kind of vertical areas and kind of blend them in just a little bit with the rest of the red. Over here, I'm gonna add a little bit of white right here on the top part of the curve of the handle. And next we're going to paint the table area. So there's this kind of wooden table area that the coffee cup is sitting on, hot chocolate cup. And let's rinse our 12 bright brush and add burnt umber to our palette. So this is a really pretty dark brown color. And let's use our 12 bright brush and add a little bit of white into this brown. So if we did this brown and did not add white, it wouldn't really show up because it's such a dark color. Um, but adding that little bit of white in there is going to definitely help. So we're going to just kind of loosely paint left and right strokes in the table area. But I'm gonna leave a lot of that black from the canvas showing through. That is going to allow some of the texture, like we're trying to create this fake wood texture, the very simplistic version of it, by the way. But leaving the black streaks kind of showing through is going to help create that effect. So going up to that chalk table line, but not going above it and just loosely doing left and right brown strokes. We can occasionally grab our white and I'm actually gonna kind of loosely paint that top part to light brown, little streaks of white in there to kind of lighten up some of the areas of the table. Do not add light brown underneath the cup because we will be adding shadow under there. So it does not make sense to add white just under the cup. So kind of do your best to go around the cup. But leave, see how I'm kind of leaving the dark shadowy area below the cup area. So that creates a little bit of shadow. And then you can paint the inside of the cup with this brown color. So I added a little bit of white into that brown to kind of lighten it up. And then I'm just going to do the entire elliptical shape inside of this cup, solid coat of that brown. Then go ahead and rinse the brown off of your brush and load your palette with some fresh Mars black paint. And we're going to add some shadow, some more shadow under our cup. So grab our 12 bright brush and our black and right under your cup, we're just gonna do some loose left and right strokes, kind of going in a relatively the shape of that cup, but it's casting a little bit of a shadow onto the table. Next, we need to let everything dry. So I went ahead and took a blow dryer and dried my entire painting. You could do the same, or you could wait about 10, 15 minutes for the entire painting to dry. Because we're gonna be drying our gingerbread man next, we don't wanna smear any of the paint with this chalk drying. So I'm just gonna start by sketching our little gingerbread man who is inside of our hot chocolate drink. And he is, so we can do a circle for the head. Make sure it's well above the opening of the cup. We can go down and sketch his arms. These are very, very long, continuous, curvy lines. Go down and then we have the top part of his torso. Um, and we don't see his legs or bottom half of his body because he is inside of the hot chocolate. 
So we can stop about halfway down in the inside opening of the cup. So really relatively simple drawing. Again, if it helps, we can kind of draw this line down here where that whipped cream hot chocolate part is. And then we have a candy cane that is sticking out to the left. So we can kind of sketch how this is going. With these candy canes, I like to draw one line first, and then I like to take that one line and turn it into a shape. So we have our candy cane shape. And that also stops like in the middle part of the opening cup of the cup, and it's gonna be kind of disguised by whipped cream. Next, I'm going to load my palette with raw sienna, which is a really pretty light brown and the color we'll be using for the gingerbread man. I recommend using the number four round brush for this because of all the curvy strokes. And let's go ahead and load our number four round brush into the light brown color. And we're going to start painting the gingerbread man and we can start with the head. So we're going to do a rounded head shape. So just painting a circle. And you're basically just going to paint the rest of your gingerbread man with that same shade of raw sienna. So go down and do his arms. It helps to kind of outline, but also work slowly. So I like to adjust my chalk drawings when I go and paint them in. You want to make sure that you stop about halfway in the opening area. So still leave some of that opening below the gingerbread man. And that bottom part is going to be covered a little bit by some whipped cream later on. So these are all just contouring strokes. They kind of curve and go in the direction of the shape. And then these strokes over here are going to go up and down. I'm gonna go back, make his head just a little bit bigger and more rounded. Then before this dries, I'm going to do a little bit of highlighting on the gingerbread man. I'm going to rinse my brush, but actually you probably don't need to rinse your brush because we will be mixing white and raw sienna together. So on the palette, let's mix about equal parts white and raw sienna together. It's going to make a pretty light, light brown color. And on the right side of the gingerbread man, I'm just going to do the curve on his head. And the right side of the arm, I'm doing this curved part. And over here on the right side of his top part of his torso, curved. And then kind of on the right side of the arm here. And kind of just blend it in with the rest of that. If you need to add more raw sienna to your brush to help get that to blend in, you can. But this adds some really pretty highlight and color variation to our gingerbread man. So 
So then I'm going to rinse all that brown off of my brush and use pure titanium white next. And we are going to paint the first layer of the candy cane. So this is the number four round brush. And I'm just going to take this and it helps to do that first initial line. And then you can slowly start to make your candy cane take its shape. So little short strokes, slowly paint that in. Make sure that it stops about halfway on the inside part of the cup. When this white dries, then we will do the red stripes. Next, I'm gonna take this white and I'm gonna start doing this whipped cream layer. And so this is like a wavy area that overlaps our gingerbread man. It also kind of overlaps our candy cane. We can go back and make this whipped cream layer thicker later on, but I'm just kind of doing these loose little strokes. Maybe we can kind of stipple a little bit right here but we don't have to go in a lot of detail with this. Next thing we're gonna do is paint the Christmas tree that's on the cup. And I'm gonna use the number four round brush in titanium white for this. So load some fresh white. So we're gonna do the tree white first and then we'll paint green over our layer of white. That way the Christmas tree green will show up nice and bright against the red color. So let's take our titanium white and the number four round brush and let's do a diagonal line going down across the cup. That is the center part of our tree. And then let's draw with paint the shape of the tree. So these are curved branches that go out in a point. And we can do the same thing on the other side so the branches get wider as we work our way down and they kind of curve up into a point so we have a uh, Christmas tree kind of going diagonal on this cup and so I'm gonna kind of so we could paint the entire thing white first let it dry and then do our color over it but I'm actually gonna do kind of a thing where I'm double loading the white with the green that way it should give enough coverage to show up against the red. So, and this green is kind of an opaque green anyway. So if you're using a super translucent color for this, I would recommend painting it all white first and then doing your color. But this is light green permanent. And so I'm gonna double load light green permanent with white. That just means that I'm putting white and green on my brush. So you see how opaque and bright that is. That means, um, that's going to allow me to paint this without having to do the first layer white. So I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to do curved strokes, filling in the shape of that tree.
Okay, and when we are done painting in that tree color, we can do the little trunk. So you can use brown or black. I'm not even gonna rinse my brush for this. I'm just gonna grab the dark brown. I'm gonna grab the black. It just needs to be a dark color. And I'm gonna do a little rectangle on the bottom of this for the tree trunk. The next thing we're gonna do is paint the little whipped cream on our gingerbread's head. So let's rinse our number four round brush and you'll need some fresh titanium white for this. So fresh white on the palette and let's just take our round brush and start kind of sketching out this little dollop of whipped cream on his head. And I'll just start by kind of doing a curved line on the side. And then I'm gonna curve this outwards, kind of sketch that. And then there's another curve that twists and then kind of goes up into a point. And then I can just paint that solid white. And then you wanna make sure that part of it overlaps the top left part of the head, but not by too much. And then before this dries, let's mix a light gray on our palette. Let's mix a little bit of black into the white. We're gonna do some shading on the whipped cream. On the left side of the cream, take the gray and just kind of gently blend it in. On the left side here and on the bottom here and blend it in with the white. Just a few little streaks of gray in there and let that Blend with the white and that'll give your whipped cream a little bit of shading. Then let's rinse and dry the number four round brush. I am going to be painting the facial details on the gingerbread man and the decorations. So we can start with white eyes, although I ended up changing these to black just to, um, I just thought it looked better with black eyes. So you can decide for yourself. I did a white mouth. So very, very simple, two eyes, a mouth, and we can do the little icing on the hands. So two little kind of wavy lines on the ends of his hands, arms. And then do like a border on the inside of him, not on the edge, so we're not outlining it, but we're just doing a little white continuous line the inside of the brown, but not exactly on the edge. We can do the little buttons so we can use the colors on our palette. We can add new colors to our palette if you want to do different colors. So I did a light green circle for this button and then red for this button. If you need to add a little bit of white in there, just kind of lighten that up to get that red to show up against the brown, you can. And then I did a little bow tie. So for the bow tie, we can do that white first and then we can add our color to it. So I did a circle and two triangles. Making that little circle in the center just a little bit bigger. It's about the same size as the gumdrop buttons. And then let's use the green to fill that in. So I'm gonna fill the triangle in, but still leave that white outline and then this one as well. Next, I'm going to paint the pink cheeks um, on the mouth. So let's mix red and white. So you need like a higher proportion of white to red to get this to look pinkish. And still using the four round brush, I'm gonna do two little pink circles on each side of the mouth. Then I'm gonna go back over the eyes and paint them in black. So Mars black and the number four round brush. I'm just going back over that and doing black instead of white. And then when this dries, I can do a little highlight on the eyes to give it some character.
I can also take this black and do a little bit of shadowing on the left side of the buttons. I just did two curved lines. And then I'm going to touch up the candy cane. So the shape of the candy cane, I'm just going to kind of uh, fix this. This part right here, I'm going to bring that black up so the shape is a little bit more even. So this right here, I brought the black up. I'm using the same color as the background and working on the negative space around the candy cane to kind of touch my shape up and then up here where that got too high I'm going back over the edges of that and a little bit right here I'm going to let that candy cane dry uh, again before I do the red stripes but what I am going to do is I'm going to do some shadowing on the coffee mug. So let's mix a little bit of black into our red to make a dark red and on the bottom right part of this cup with this dark red I'm just going to do this curved kind of flat area just bottom right and over here on the handle just on the bottom right, maybe a little bit of shadow on the top bottom of the handle as well. I'm going to add a little bit of water to my brush just to help kind of loosen this color. I'm going to do a little bit of shadow on the far right edge of that mug. I'm just kind of gently sort of outlining that edge but not doing a whole lot of that. So that is all the shadowing I'm going to do. Just a little bit more down here but we already added some highlights. This is just the darker shadowy part do perhaps a little bit here along the rim of the cup. It helps get that part to stand out a little bit better. Next, let's rinse our brush and grab our titanium white and hopefully the black part of the eyes are dry. I'm just gonna take this and very simply do two white dots in the upper right part of each of the black of the eyes. Next, we are going to do the stripes on the candy cane. So you want to load your palette with some fresh cadmium red medium and use the number four round brush. And we're just going to do little stripes so we can start at the top or the bottom, whatever is easier. But I'm going to do these stripes going in a curved direction and going diagonally. So make sure that you kind of bend that shape and then it curves. So we can go like this. And then when you start getting to the part of the candy cane that bends, we can bend these red stripes. If you have any leftover chalk residue from any of the drying, you can use a soft, wet baby wipe to gently lift it off and it will come off. So that's what I'm doing here. Just be careful not to smear any wet paint. And then I'm going to do little red dots on the Christmas tree using the number four round brush and the red paint. Then I'm gonna do the yellow star on the tree. And for that, let's use primary yellow and titanium white. So you'll likely have to mix white and yellow together to get that 
yellow to be opaque against the dark red background of the cup. So I'm mixing yellow and white together on my palette and using the number four round brush and just do a simple little star on top of the tree. So just basic little star shape. If you need to do a couple more coats on that, you can. And then we're gonna do the little pine needle decorations kind of around this. So there's uh, a few branchy pine needle things in the upper left corner of this painting, kind of like a Christmas tree branch in the background. And so I used a an angle brush for this. This is a 3 8 inch angle brush. And I'm using a combination of both of the greens. So we have the light green permanent, the hooker's green hue, which is a darker green that I loaded onto my palette. And then I want to just go ahead and load the brush in both of those colors, the light green and that dark green. Start at the upper left corner and draw a line or paint a line. So that's gonna be the center part of our first branch. Reload the brush. You just wanna load that brush right there on the tip of that, the bristles. And then you're holding the brush using, utilizing the angle of the brush to paint little pine needles. I like to start at the end of the branch and do little um, lines and then work my way so the lines are going down diagonally and work my way to the uh, left side of the branch. Um, notice that I loaded my brush in a little bit of titanium white too. So if your green is not showing up bright, which likely it won't because it's against a dark background, if you add a teeny bit of white to your brush, that's gonna brighten your green. It's gonna blend right there on the canvas and look really pretty. Just little bits of white is all you need to brighten that up. I'm gonna do another branch line. So doing the same exact technique with the middle line first and the little angled pine needles. And we can decide if this one is overlapping the other one. If you want, you could actually introduce a little bit of yellow in there as well. So you, yellow, the primary yellow that's on your palette would work. And so that one's gonna overlap. I just did that by painting over some of the previous pine needles from the other branch. And we have room for another one. So I'm gonna do another center line. This one kind of went around the other two, kind of dipped down, almost touched is the gingerbread man, but this piece is still very much in the background. So same thing, utilizing that titanium white, so little bits of white in there will help brighten those little pine needles up so that you can see them against the dark background. And this one overlapped that other branch. Then I'm going to do the same thing again, but I'm going to do some pine needles on the table in the lower left corner area, the same exact technique. Also, this is a dark area, so I want to make sure I'm utilizing that white to help brighten these greens up. So I'm going to do that center line and the little pine needles attached to it. I'll do three branches, three little pine needle branches on this. So this one's kind of going up. And the other one is going to be kind of going down and off the canvas. So you can do these in layers. You can do a dark layer first and then build up to the light layer, or you can do dark and light at the same time just by reloading your brush in different amounts of dark and light. Because this is like an accent piece of the painting, we don't have to get super realistic or detailed about it. So this piece is going down and off the canvas. When this dries, I'm gonna paint little berries in the center of this.
Next, I'm going to paint the marshmallows on the table. So the lower right part has three marshmallows, large marshmallows, and I'm using a number four round brush to paint this. I'll use a combination of titanium white and gray for some of the shading. So to do these marshmallows, let's start with this one right here. It's a simple oval shape painted in solid. And then don't rinse your brush. Add a little bit of black to your brush and mix that on the palette so that it turns into a light gray. And then take this and turn it into a cylinder. Only this side of the marshmallow is going to have that light gray color. So that's gonna make the different sides of the marshmallow stand out and also give it some shadowing at the same time. So we're gonna take this very simple concept of painting a marshmallow and do this this way. So this is the light gray part and that's gonna be the oval. And then I'm gonna do white for the cylinder side part. So this marshmallow is standing up and do curved lines when you paint the side of it that's going to give your marshmallow a little bit of form you just want to make sure that the sides have different shades of white or gray so that they stand out from each other and i'm going to do a third marshmallow that is kind of going a diagonal on the table so we can use white or gray for the cylinder or the oval part of the marshmallow. We'll do white this time. So that little oval is going diagonal, then change it to the gray color and do the cylinder part. And those are going in a curved direction. And then if we want, we can take a little bit of white and do just a little bit of highlighting some of the darker areas so like right here on the side and then right here kind of on the top and the side just kind of dragging that color down to kind of highlight some of the darker edges and next I'm going to show you how to do the bokeh lights that are in the background so this is going to add a really pretty touch to a very plain background if you don't want to do this you don't have to it's kind of an extra thing um, but what I like to do is take my round brush and I'm going to use yellow and white for these bokeh lights and you just take your brush and kind of just paint a dot and then you take your finger and smear it out so that's going to create that blurry translucent glow so we don't want it super bright these are the kind of like the dim lights they're sort of in the background and we'll do some brighter lights for um, next but these ones are going to be just kind of soft and dim so you're just painting one dot with your round brush and you're taking your finger and you're smearing it. So you want to have some of your lights overlap each other. You want to do, so some of these have more white in them and some have more yellow. So that's how you can kind of vary that color intensity of the white and the yellow. Some of these, we can do two layers. So if we do two kind of blurry layers on top of each other, that's gonna make the circle brighter. Some of these, we can actually take our brush, see what I did there? I painted a larger, more intense circle and did not smear it. So it's still kind of dry brush style, what I'm doing with this brush here. So kind of painting it with not a lot of paint on my brush, but I could still make that circle kind of more larger and brighter. So we want to think about variety here, variety of sizes, a variety of color intensity, variety of yellow to white proportions. Um, there's some variety with how these are overlapping each other. I'm actually gonna use a little bit of water to kind of smear that one out a little bit more. So these are all kind of bunched in this like diagonal direction. So right here, that diagonal direction. So from the upper right to the lower left part, uh, and going behind the cup is kind of where I'm doing the bokeh lights. You could do it all over the canvas, but I just wanted to do these in this kind of diagonal area of the background. That was just kind of my design choice there. And so see how bright that one is because I used a lot of white and a lot more paint, I smeared it. So you're gonna kind of, kind of takes a while to get the hang of this um, to figure out kind of the proportion of paint you're putting on your brush to how like hard you're smearing it. But once you kind of get it, the hang of it, it kind of just get, goes really easily. And it's such a pretty effect that we can do to our background. 
And really the key takeaway here with these bokeh lights is translucent, very, very thin layer of paint. A lot of that black is showing through. So you don't want your circles to be solid. You want them to be see-through. The next thing we're going to do is paint the berries in the um, pine needle, this little bunch of pine needles right here. So I'm gonna use the Cad Red Medium Hue, the round brush and paint three little circles just in the center of this. So each circle is kind of different in terms of size, so slightly different from each other. And then I'm going to highlight these berries. So on the left side of each of these circles, I know that got cut off a little bit, but I'm loading my brush in just a little bit of white and just kind of painting white on the left side and just kind of like blending it in. And that is enough to just kind of highlight the circles. Um, there's a few more things that I'm going to highlight, including this candy cane. You want a fresh, clean, round brush for this in titanium white. So I'm just gonna paint this curve right over my lines, my red lines and the white part, just one white curve. And that's enough to give that a little bit of a highlight. I'm gonna add a little bit of highlight to the cup, a little bit more this time, but some pure white lines. So I'm gonna do one curvy pure white line on the edge, upper left corner. So right here going on a curve on the rim and on the upper left part of the edge. So that part got a little bit of a highlight. And the final thing I'm going to show you is how to do the little spiral steam lines that are coming out from our hot cocoa. So we can take our round brush and do little curvy lines. So if you don't feel comfortable about this yet, you can draw it with chalk first and then see if you like the way your lines look and then paint over it or you can just paint your lines. So just doing like this spiral curvy line. There's a few little lines that are just kind of, kind of low in the cup. So this one's kind of curving out and going outwards. So I did three little spiral lines. Maybe there's one right here. So again, you can change the placement of this. And then maybe there's another line over here on the left. And then a few little short lines that are kind of curving out and not going up very far. And that is it. I did change one of my spirals. Um, another thing that you can do is you can add little sprinkles on the whipped cream. So if you look closely, I did that as well off camera. Hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me.